Hi everyone, welcome to the first week of LCC 150D Statistics for Informed Decision Making. Today I'm just going to look at a couple of uh, problems from Chapter 1. It has to do with making a pie chart and the other one has to do with making a bar graph. So basically what I'm going to do is open an Excel chart. An Excel chart that uh, you should have on your computer and if you don't know how to use Excel uh, it's always a good thing to ask me Skype me, call me, or send a long letter. One of the problems that we're going to do today is example 1, 2, and page 7. So if you look at example 1, 2, and page 7, you'll see that it's a question of which major. And it talks about 1.6 million first year students enrolling in college, blah, blah, blah. So what I did here is I opened up a page in Excel and I put the field of study and a percent of students as bold titles. Titles are very important in making an Excel chart. Then the field of studies that I chose are the ones that are given in the book, arts and humanities, biological sciences, and so on. Here's the percentage of students, the percent of students that majored in these areas, 12.8, 7.6, so on. Okay, so what you basically do is you just fill in these two columns. You have a column A and a column B. The next thing you're going to do is go up here to insert. And when you uh, type in insert, or when you uh, click on insert rather, you get a lot of different types of options. And one of the options are charts. Okay? And the chart that we're going to choose today is pie chart. And a pie chart has all of these different types of options. And uh, then if you just keep your cursor over there, out comes a pop up and it's going to tell you what the options will give you. So I'm going to choose a basic one, the pie chart. Okay, Nothing happens. The reason why nothing happens is because you didn't highlight any of your data. So one of the things you should always do before you start getting into the insert the chart is to highlight, hold down the uh, mouse over the uh, areas that you want. Notice I included field of study and percent of students. Now I go to insert, now I go to pie, and now I can press those, uh, that option. <clears throat> so you have basically the pie chart here, and you can see the different colors. Unfortunately, when you print this out, if you don't have a color printer, it doesn't really make a big difference. And you can see that the color relationships all go to the specific areas that you typed in over here, arts, humanities, and so on. The other options are up here. You can just play with this for hours. If you have no time in your life, that you uh, then you can just spend a few minutes after it. If you have a lot of time, you should probably do something else besides working on Excel. So you notice there's the black and white image and so on. And if you're into this color scheme, more power to you. All right. Now, one of the things that I would recommend, and I really demand on all areas for this course, is that the charts will explain what the data is without having to add any extra dialogue or extra information. So the problem here is that the title doesn't really tell me anything. So I'm going to change the title. All you do is click it on. And I want to change the title to something that is explanatory. If you've ever looked at magazines or journals or even USA Today, they have plenty of charts, plenty of pie charts, bar graphs, and so on. And they're pretty well self-explanatory. You have to do that. That is a requirement for this course. Remember that in this week, you're learning how to display data. You're not learning how to get the data yet. You're not learning how to crunch the numbers. All you're doing is displaying the data. So the data is given to you. So it's basically just how do you show this data. So the percent of students really doesn't tell me anything. What I could do is percent of students in a college major. Click out. There you go. That's your new title. And if you're ambitious and you want to make this bigger, you can if you want. And you just go into the sides and make it bigger. For old people like me, it's great because I can't see. And there you go. Now there are other options as I mentioned in the insert up here for the pie chart. So I did a couple of others and this one is, a, this is basically the same one. And this is the division, one of the divisions, if you went to that. This is a 3D, and you can break up the 3D as well. So that is the pie chart example. The next, next example is on page 11, and that's example 1.5, and that is making a bar graph. So 1.5 is a discussion on 
what day that births happen more often. And this was uh, during the week of 2005. So this was the average number of babies born in each day of the week in 2005. Notice that that is given to you. And notice that you don't have to crunch up the numbers. All you're doing is displaying the numbers. Again, this is about displaying the numbers. So is a bar graph better than a pie chart? That's up to you. There's your decision-making process for this course. There's the first decision. You have to decide what's the best way to display the data. So pie, graph, uh, pie charts, bar graphs, and even uh, the other options that are in Chapter 1. So we're going to talk about how do you make a bar graph with Excel. So here you go. I've done the day and the births in bold. The titles are there. So that helps explain. That will help you in making your chart as well. And you have all the numbers here and so on. So now we'll just highlight. Again, you have to highlight because the computer does not know, the program does not know what you want to do. So now we have insert. This time we're going to insert a bar graph. Look at all those bar graphs that you have. You have 3D bar graphs, cylinder bar graphs, and pyramid bar graphs, and ice cream looking bar graphs and all that stuff. So we're going to choose the basic one and there you go. There it is. And the what it says here is that we have births which is, we'll have to change that chart title. And then we have the number here. Notice that in this case it doesn't really tell you unless you put your cursor over that that's 7,374. And over here on Monday 11,704 and over here on Tuesday 13,169 and that's the day I was born, but not in 2005, a couple of years earlier. But the, here's a problem with the bar graph that is really important for you to understand. Not only is the title unclear, but the, but the axes, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, do not have any information. I don't know what the heck they stand for. So you have to have that information. Call them labels. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this thing that really doesn't say anything. Besides that, it makes your graph look bigger. Okay, now it's the layout that I need to work on. So here we go. Up here is layout. And now I have axis titles. Okay, there's the axis titles. So I'll click on and the primary horizontal title. I want to display a title below the axis. So I'm going to display the title here. And the title will be the number of births. And one of the things I like to do is because... I can't see because I'm old is I like to make that bigger so I'm going to change if you just right right click you'll get a new uh, font size if you want to you can you can change the uh, the uh, font uh, shape and so on now that's the number of births that explains this title so that makes sense now if the number of births was in millions of thousands and so on and sometimes you'll see that in graphs. This is 2,000 for that particular day in 2005. But this would, if this meant 2,000 of millions, which would be a very high number, and we'll get into that right now, you'd have to put that in here, number of births in millions. And you'll see that quite often in the coming months. Now I want to go back and do the vertical axis. And I want to have a, a, a title. And you can have a choice of title. For instance, a vertical title gives it to you this way. If that's confusing, then you may not want to choose that. So we'll get rid of that and we'll go to a more horizontal title and it looks like that. So that looks like the best option for me anyway because I can read that. It's And that is day of the week. And you can also make that a little bit bigger and I'll make it up to the font 12. Okay. And I can make this bigger as well so it stretches it out. One of the things you want to do too is uh, do a spell check F7 and that way you have the information correct. So now the only thing remaining is this title of the uh, of, of the chart itself and if I go to uh, page layout well actually I can just go here it's much easier just change that and I will be writing in let's see number of birth day of the week or uh, and then I can put uh, number of births on a particular day of the week and you can make that as long as you want and so on so there it is that's the bar graph and that's the uh, explanation as well for the whole all the information that you have here again when you have your bar graph you can change the color you can make this 3d and so on you can go nuts on this stuff and uh, that's basically what it looks like in another format so uh, a couple of other things too is that uh, if you always right click you can see that there are a lot of different things that you can change the chart type 
and if you right click in here you can uh, format the plot area as well and you can fill it in and so on so it's a lot of exploration that you need to do if you're not familiar with this so hopefully this will work out for you I'm saving it and you can always uh, send it as an attachment for me to look at thank you very much